Welcome to the Risk and Repeat podcast, episode number 235. I'm Rob Wright, Security News Director at Tech Target, and I am here with Senior Security News Writer Alex Kalafi and Security News Writer Ariel Waldman. Welcome, guys. Thanks. Hi, Thanks. Rob. How are you doing? Good. No complaints, unlike uh, a certain very large security company. <laughs> yeah. And a certain... Uh, segment of the of the population and a not insignificant segment well it's only under one percent of windows devices so how bad can it be yeah yeah we are we are recording this tuesday morning july 23rd we are of course discussing none other than the errant or defective crowdstrike uh, update that knocked off a considerable number of Windows systems, causing blue screen of death, reboot loops, and sparked uh, a lot of disruption and chaos in, well, all over the world, really, starting uh, early in the early hours, Friday morning, just after midnight, I believe. And it's been one of the biggest incidents events, I guess, in IT in recent years. It's been one of the biggest uh, stories, obviously, uh, this year. And the biggest since solar winds, I would say. Yeah, yeah. And it's not even a cyber attack, which is unfortunate. Uh, but we are here today to discuss it at length and to go into some of the questions that this raises. Because there's a lot of questions right now. We know quite a bit. There's a lot we still don't know about. So I guess we'll start with um, Friday morning, guys, when you woke up and you first heard the news, either through our Slack or maybe you got emails or texts about it. I certainly did in the early hours. Uh, what was your reaction? Ariel, let's start with you. Oh, oh sure. Um, I got text messages from you guys, my parents. I feel like everyone, <laughs> everyone was messaging about it, um, and how, and a lot of people I know were affected by it. Um, so that was pretty different from other events that we cover here. So I was really surprised at first. I definitely was thinking attack. I hadn't really read into it yet, and I was concerned about that. Mm -hmm. Once I realized it wasn't an attack, um, had different concerns, still concerned, but definitely different, not quite as scary as thinking that it was a cyber attack. Right. Um, yeah. So that was kind of what happened when I first heard about the news. Yeah. And on a Friday, too. Yeah, of course. What a of course bummer. It's on a Friday. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Alex. So for me, I, I remember it very well because, you know, I, I woke up. And I look at my phone, I open Twitter, um, like sleepy eyed. And I notice that a journalist who doesn't cover cybersecurity that I follow, it, it was, it was Tom Warren from the, the verge. Oh yeah. I, yep. I saw the word crowd strike in a tweet by him and I'm like, that is weird. He does not exist in the bubble. I mean, he covers tech, but he's not in, in the bubble of, of news that we cover. So I'm like, something is... If I'm hearing about CrowdStrike outside of our little world, something is wrong. Yeah. Which I know CrowdStrike would normally disagree with, but uh, that's sort of, that was sort of the, the, the moment for me. And then just over the course of the day, I mean, I, uh, I had popped a tire, so I went to get uh, my tire re replaced, and then while I was in line at the auto shop, there was a customer talking about it. <laughs> um, I had like a cousin asking me about it. I had like it was it, it was it's one of those events that happens maybe once a year. I think Colonial Pipeline was the last time, and then before that, it was Solar Winds. It's a great where call. Where people where people who don't think about cybersecurity very often or at least as much as we do start using phrases like crowd strike mm. and that's and then it's always interesting and it always makes us feel like oh 
or it makes me feel like, oh, I'm like, I know what this is. That's kind of cool. But it also makes me feel uncomfortable in a way, too, because it's like, I don't know. It, it's like it's it's like something is where it's not supposed to be in the zeitgeist or whatever. Yeah. Yep. But how about you? <laughs> uh, so I, I got some emails and some some texts. Uh, I didn't really see that. I mean, I get up early because I can't sleep late anymore, uh, regardless of the circumstances. Oh, so, so about 5 a.m., I, I, you know, I look at my phone, I see this stuff rolling in and I think to myself, oh, boy. But at that point, it was reassuring because at that hour, everyone had kind of figured out, at least within the tech and the InfoSec community, had determined, yeah, this is this is not a cyber. This is a an update. It, it knocked off a lot of uh, CrowdStrike customers, knocked them offline, put them in this uh, blue screen loop. So that was reassuring. So I had maybe like a half a second of being like, oh, oh goodness, is this um, is is the is the is the great cyber war underway? Uh, did somebody take down the grid, et cetera, et cetera. But uh, we should turn to the number of affected devices and, and I, I guess put this in context because when this first happened, I was feeling like, oh man, this must have hit every CrowdStrike customer with Windows systems uh, because the, the damage, the disruption seems so widespread. I mm -hmm. mean, you heard about hospitals, you heard about hotels, obviously the airlines are the big one, uh, government agencies all across the globe. Uh, Ariel, you did a story yesterday based on some um, metrics that I, I guess both CrowdStrike and Microsoft offered over the weekend to kind of put the, the scope in context. I was surprised by the number. Um, so what did, what did you find? Yeah, I was surprised as well. I mean, they said, they both said um, 8.5 million Windows devices were affected. That's kind of an estimate, but that's the number that they put out. Um, but they said it's only less than 1% of all Windows machines. Um, so I don't know exactly. It sounds a little less when you think about it that way, less than 1% of all machines. Um, 8.5 sounds like, 8.5 million sounds like a lot, but the less than 1% kind of makes it sound not as um not as horrible i guess yeah we still don't have i guess a full picture of how many crowdstrike customers that represents so and i don't want to speculate on that but yeah well, less than one percent uh, mm, uh, to me that that comes across as number futzing really like it's uh because <laughs> because okay so let's say there's like a California wildfires or wherever or mm -hmm. whatever, and a hundred houses uh get get burned or whatever. Um, and then what if the California government was like, well, under 0.005% of houses uh burned as a result of these fires? That's kind of how it feels, where it's under eight million machines, or it's under or yeah, it's under one percent, whatever, eight million machines, but it's the it's like the worst one percent. So oh, it's yeah. not really helpful information. I don't I think, think they're trying to make it sound better, maybe. Yeah, Less no, it, it is. I think you're right, Ariel. Uh, that's what I think. I think it is helpful information, but I don't. I guess I don't like how Microsoft is sort of saying it like it's the last word. When that's sure. really not the story here, even if it's it is the impact technically is so important. big. Yeah, exactly. It's exactly. been it's been very visible impact, very painful uh, effects across a number of different industries, as we said. Um, Want to go into particulars and to, to specifics here for a minute, and then we can kind of expand on the conversation. Uh, so CrowdStrike came out and said that. I guess the th this was a channel, this was not a software update for Falcon. This was a channel file update, a content update that they issued, that they issue to their endpoint agents all the time. So this is like routine. This is not something uh, that is out of the ordinary at all. 
And also it's not a software patch that customers can choose when they apply it and when they don't apply it. The content update, these sensor configuration updates go out to the Falcon endpoint agents on Windows devices, on a lot of devices, based on new threats, new threat intelligence, new malicious activity. And apparently they said that there was something regarding a uh, penetration testing tool, uh, command and control uh, infrastructure activity that they had detected and that they, they pushed out this configuration update uh, just after midnight in about an hour, I guess in, in, looking at the timestamps about an hour, a little more than an hour after they started sending these out, they stopped it. So you assume that they did not, these did not go out to all agents on all devices, uh, that there's a percentage out there that were unaffected. It's unclear, again, how many are unaffected, uh, what percentage of CrowdStrike's total customer base was affected. We're, we're still waiting on those numbers. But let's talk about CrowdStrike's response here. What'd you guys think of it? Alex, let's start with you. I don't know because I can't imagine being in this situation. Um, and so when I saw the CEO on, I don't know, NBC, mm -hmm giving an interview on Friday morning and he looked more scared than pretty much anyone I had ever seen in my life um, or stressed out or exhausted or all three. Um, I will admit I got a little, a little tinge of, of sympathy um, immediately. And, and, so, and to the point where I don't envy anyone who has to solve this problem. I think as far as messaging, as far as, the work goes it seems like they they mobilized quickly it seems like they got a lot of their staff working a lot of hours to set this right it seems like microsoft has, has been a big help which is good um so so maybe there's some some collaboration there so i guess it's one of the i well it did take a little bit like maybe a day or half a day for anyone from CrowdStrike to apologize um, formally for this, which which was kind of a little frustrating, but I guess I guess short story long, what I'm kind of saying here is, given the scope of what they're dealing with and how fast it began, and as a person who hasn't had to contend with a lot of this CrowdStrike stuff, like we didn't see the the blue screens or whatever um it's it doesn't seem bad mm. like it, it seems like they they did as well as i could have expected them to given this situation i think we will we also need a post-mortem on how this actually specifically happened step by step who's responsible how it happened yeah. Like that, that post mortem will get in a couple months before I can really answer that question. But my initial read is not perfect, but given the circumstances, I'm I'm somewhat sympathetic. I don't know. What did you think? I'll get into my thoughts in a minute. Uh, I, Ariel, what 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 was your take? I mean, just based on the amount of information that you've been tracking uh, from CrowdStrike, what'd you feel like? with their response how would you describe it um i think their response yeah i kind of agree with alex that they did the best they could um it seems like some of the tools that are going out are kind of might be difficult to use which i know isn't their fault exactly because they're not that many options but um i know they're trying to automate the the recovery tools right now it's kind of manual which seems a little bit difficult um already kind of adding to a bad situation make it harder to recover yeah um but yeah so i think their response i think they did the best they could i'm more concerned about how it happened i guess um mm. how they like mm -hmm. let this go go through i know it wasn't exactly a software update but i feel like software security has been like such a big thing lately the and all that and pushing things out and third-party yeah. risks and 
it's like just one more example of that happening. And I feel like there's been so many warnings about this kind of things happening and the third party risks and supply chain things. And it's kind of like, how did this happen again? Yeah. Like such a big company. Um, so yeah, I, I think that they, I think they did the best they could. I don't know. I'm sure. Um, yeah, it was really tough to when they woke up to this as well, um, to figure out what to do and how to act quickly. And, for so many affected individuals. Right. And where do you start? Who do you prioritize? I mean, it seemed they probably had to prioritize things like transportation and healthcare. Mm -hmm. But my goodness. Uh, no, I largely agree with you guys in terms of the response effort. Uh, Alex, you noted that George Kurtz, when CEO, when he first tweeted about this, there was a number of people noted that there was a, uh, an apology that was sorely lacking in that initial tweet. He followed it up later with a, a, a more extensive statement that you know, was very apologetic and, you know, hey, we understand the gravity of the of this moment. Uh, the CTO, other other officials have been out there as well uh, talking about this uh, and and being and apologizing profusely for it. Uh, I think you you guys are right. Like it sounds like they mobilized people very quickly. They got a lot of information out there uh, within hours of this really, like the the scope of this uh, catastrophe, this incident uh, coming into view, like they they were pushing. I mean, we, we knew what the channel file was. We knew the specific, I, I guess, the line of code in this channel file update that was problematic, what it was doing. We got a lot of technical details and these guys were pushing out um, guidance, pushing out tools. They created a, a page for a, a, like a resource center for affected customers, you know, whether they were on AWS or on Google Cloud or using Microsoft 365. So uh, good on them. I really think the response effort, uh, I agree with you guys, has been very good. The thing that I'm kind of wondering about and perplexed about, which leads to the next uh, portion of this of this discussion the next topic is if they if they were able to rule out very quickly that this was not a cyber attack and they were able to rule out or they were able to locate the specific channel update channel file update the specific line of code and and what it was doing and why that quickly then i got to believe at this point as we sit here on July 23rd, Tuesday morning, that they know, or at least have a pretty good idea about how this update was issued and how it got past whatever checks and protections they have against something like this going out and causing blue screens of death. So Maybe this is unfair and maybe I'm putting too much on CrowdStrike, but they're one of the best in the business. We know that they are huge. I mean, I think by revenue or by market cap, or at least previous market cap, they were the biggest standalone cybersecurity vendor uh, in the market, I believe. Um, they got a lot of smart people. They have a lot of very, very, very skilled people over there. Uh, so I have to believe that they have a pretty good idea of what caused this mm -hmm. and, but we're still waiting for sort of an explanation as to why this channel file update went out the way that it did and how it was allowed to um, go out the way that it did. And the fact that they push so many of these, you know, configuration updates out on a regular basis, you know, this isn't, they're not new at this. They know what they're doing. Uh, this one file update went out, wreaked havoc, caused a lot of problems. I mean, that's an understatement. Um, so maybe, again, maybe it's too soon to expect this, but I have to believe that they have figured out what went wrong here, at least most of what went wrong, uh, and that they haven't said anything yet is odd, um, concerning. I have I have a question that, sure. that one of you two might be able to answer because because you both wrote the story. So, um, what's the status 
on the recovery of the outage right now to the best of our knowledge because it seems like they've mobilized some fixes not mobilized they sort of put out some some initial fixes mm -hmm. they're working on more um the recovery's manual to some extent but they're so, yeah they're, so they're doing very, they're very doing, manual yeah very manual they're doing their best with it like our airlines still down our hospitals still down have the critical infrastructures uh for the most part gotten back online like what's how's that looking well, well I guess not, oh, yeah sorry. go ahead i was just gonna point to you ariel because oh, yeah. you, you wrote about this <laughs> Crowdstrike, I mean, they didn't have any definitive number, but they said a significant number have been restored out of the 8.5 million Windows devices. So they haven't really shed that much light on specifics about the recovery, just that a significant number have been restored. I don't know exactly what that means. Um, and they're working to accelerate the recovery processes. So hopefully um, that will I don't know when that, how long that's going to take, but it does sound like they're making pretty good progress. Um, but yeah, I was wondering, I mean, I don't know. It, I think people are still affected. It's definitely ongoing. Um, it's definitely yeah. ongoing. Yeah, there's definitely some continued uh, disruption out there. Mm -hmm. uh, we know that, I mean, the airlines are, a lot of them are back up and not totally back up. It seems like it seems like there's a lot of airports that are still dealing with um, blue screen systems, but maybe the critical systems, like the fact that they're getting planes back in the air, uh, I think is you know worthy. Um, how just anecdotally reading some of the reporting, you see a lot of the healthcare organizations that were affected resuming services, maybe not full services, but getting back there. It's tough to tell um, because, again, I think there's probably so many organizations that were hit and you have to prioritize and figure out what their critical systems are and how to get them back up. One of the complicating factors, I should say, about this whole thing, which we should talk about, is not only do these systems have to be uh, restarted and um remediated manually. So there's no automated software fix that you can just push out over the internet and it's just gonna fix these systems and update them and remove the file. You gotta, you gotta restart each system in safe mode and do some tinkering, like remove the file, et cetera. You should say that Microsoft released a tool, for, I think it, it was initially re released as a USB tool um, but then they updated it for other um, other methods. And uh, so they released that the other day. And uh, I, I think just this morning, or maybe it was last night, CrowdStrike did the sort of the uh, speedy recovery method that they are, are um, that they had touted previously yesterday or the day before. Uh, they published a YouTube video sort of walking people through that. I mean, it's still not automated it's still not something you can just like snap your fingers and push out to a bunch of systems but apparently it's supposed to speed up the recovery process the one thing that i think is really a, an obstacle for who knows how many folks some folks you know we've seen some reports on this but not it's unclear how many is the bitlocker issue and bitlocker is the encryption scheme for your you know your windows hard drives if you um, if you want to encrypt your hard drive and protect it from you know external threats, you you apply BitLocker um, and you get the keys. You store the keys in a you know safe area somewhere, hopefully. And when you need to access that hard drive and the Windows operating system, you just enter the key and you're off to the races. And the problem for some organizations is that they apparently don't have access to those BitLocker keys because they may have been on a system that was also blue screened. And if you can't access that system uh, and getting the BitLocker keys and applying them to critical servers, let's say, uh, that's you're unable to do that. Uh, so it's essentially like you've ransomware yourself. 
And there's some fixes out there for this. Uh, we're working on a potential story about this obstacle and some of the fixes that have been touted for it uh, currently. I'm not sure when that's going to be ready. We're, we're still collecting information on that. But but essentially, CrowdStrike published the other day a method for getting around the BitLocker encryption and getting in there to a system with safe mode without having to apply the key and being able to remove the file. This is, it, this is very strange to me. I, I still don't totally know how it works because it seems to me like a potential vulnerability that you can just skip over BitLocker encryption and just say, I, well, I don't feel like entering the key. I just want to go into the hard, the hard drive and remove this file. Uh, but I've been told, at least by one expert, that there is an explanation as to why this is the way that it is, uh, why it works. And there's some feedback online that says that this method works. Who knows? Mm -hmm. uh, we're, but, we're... but it sounds like maybe the most acute uh, things that were disrupted, your hospitals, your airlines, those were probably mostly fixed first anecdotally that that must be the case otherwise we'd still be hearing about it right yeah i mean it seems that way i know that there was coverage yesterday that says that said uh i think it was delta airlines had to cancel another 20 percent um of their flights yesterday i think mm -hmm. uh, so they're still dealing with it but you know again planes are back up in the air and services have resumed to uh, some percentage you know, we don't we don't we don't know mm -hmm. so yeah i think it's it's people are getting their systems restored it's just unclear how many and how long it's going to take for the the issue to be fully resolved it's unclear you know we're we're at a stage here where uh it seems like some of these fixes and these remediations are working but again the recovery process is pretty painstaking uh so it's unclear how long this is going to take um i want to talk before we wrap up just what do you think the long-term ramifications of this might be i know we've gotten a lot of analyst feedback on this we've we got a lot of expert feedback out there from folks in infosec uh what do we feel like like I, Alex, I'll go to you first. What do you think? You've covered CrowdStrike. You've you've followed them pretty closely. What do you think is going to be the effect for them, at least in the short term? So, I don't know. I'm thinking about this from a few different ways. One is, I think CrowdStrike's messaging is going to change a lot going forward. Mm -hmm. um, they have been accused of some arrogance in the past within the... Uh, cyber security infosec communities and that they would pretty openly criticize competitors other vendors um most recently microsoft but i think it's happened to sentinel one and some others before in the past mm -hmm. um i think we're gonna see a more humble crowd strike for for a decent stretch mm -hmm. i think that's something we're gonna see they're, they're gonna probably uh be more um more close to the vest on that yeah. i think the stock is probably gonna continue taking a pretty hard hit for a bit i mean there was the announcement that um i think congress called the the ciso yeah so today uh, you know tuesday mm. i think depending on how that goes that could that could continue this train um I don't think this is going to wreck CrowdStrike long term mm -hmm. in the same way Solar Winds was. Um, but I do think they have a really long, difficult road ahead of them to get back to some stretch of normalcy. Like I, I people are calling this as bad as Solar Winds. I don't think so. I mm -hmm. I don't well I don't think it's going to it's going to permanently collapse trust in this brand in the same way that I think that's sort of happened in Solar Winds at least permanently for now whatever yeah. um 
but I think they have a long road ahead of them to recover nonetheless. That that's mm. sort of what I think. Interesting. Ariel. Um, yeah, I think I think they will come back from this. I don't know if it's like almost worse that it wasn't an attack or if it's better. I mean, obviously it's better that it wasn't an attack for the victims, but I don't know for crowd strike if this is like better or worse because it was a technical error on their side. Um and it's yeah. like I don't know it, but um, I know I think they will come back from it. I mean, I feel like a lot of vendors lately have been under fire, like Microsoft had those breaches, and there's been a lot of bad things going on, uh, or companies getting breached and things like that, and they seem to come back okay. So um, I'm thinking CrowdStrike in the long run will come back okay. I mean, Microsoft went before Congress recently, and yeah. Um, they're still they're cyber still here. <laughs> right cyber safety review board was yeah. just like your culture is awful i mean i'm yeah. paraphrasing but obviously that's you know inadequate and in need of a giant overhaul and yeah i mean i think it'll make people look at i mean monopolies obviously have CrowdStrike was had so many significant customers that um the impact was so yeah. big across so many important sectors mm -hmm. maybe that would change a little bit um that they would use different see if there's uh other vendors they would use maybe um yeah that could change a little bit but um no in the long run i i think they'll be okay um as long as ever the recovery process you know continues, continues. i think that has, that'll be remain to be seen. I know analysts kind of say it could be a long and slow recovery process without the automation. So I think that will have a lot to do with it as well. Yeah, I I'll reserve judgment in this regard. I think it's going to depend a lot on what we find out about how this update was, how it got through, how how it was sent out without any kind of um, red flags or alerts or anyone preventing it before it caused all this all these issues uh i do think there's going to be an interesting debate like to your points guys about is it better to be breach or is it better to have a technical snafu like this that causes widespread chaos because solar winds i mean they're they're still around they're back up they've recovered a lot of people give them a break because it was such a, a sophisticated nation state attack that caused the supply chain uh, 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 campaign, the supply chain attacks. This is a little different, so we'll see. We'll see. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, we we are we will be waiting for more information from CrowdStrike. Uh, I'm sure there'll be more to discuss on this, but uh, at this point, I think we can end it here. Uh, Alex, Ariel, I really appreciate you guys jumping on to discuss this with me. Thanks, Rob. Yeah, thanks, Rob. And thank you to the readers and listeners of Tech Target Security and the Risk and Repeat podcast. I'm Rob Wright, and we'll see you next time.